Hello? Oh, come on. Have you just had a big lunch or what? Hello? Can we all stand up, please? There you go. Don't you look lovely? Now, you know my name, it's Simon, but I don't know your name. Can we all, after the count of three, shout out our names? One, two, three. Very good. Not bad. Now, the thing is, you're all about to hear an opera. Hands up who's been to an opera before. Well, those of you who have know that opera singers have very loud voices. So can you all please sing your names in the best opera voice that you've got after three? One, two, three. <laughs> Fantastic. What great singers you all are. Now, you remember your names, right? Can you spell your names? Those of you whose names begin with the letter A, the letter B, or the letter C, please remain standing. And those whose names begin with the letter D to Z, please sit down. Very good. ABCs, could you put your hands up, please? Right, look at you. Now repeat after me. We are the ABCs. We are the ABCs. Louder. We are the ABCs. I would like you to say, I am an ABC. I am an ABC. Now, any of you D to Zs whose mother is a name A, B, or C, could you please stand up? Ah, look, there's a few more of you now. You too are ABCs. Repeat after me, I am an ABC. I am an ABC. Okay, those of you still sitting, we're the D to Zs. We're pretty cool, aren't we? Oh yeah, look at you. Ah, oh, you look so good. You look so healthy. You look so strong. Let's say D to Z, we're the best. D to Z, we're the best. Stamp your feet. D to Z, we're the best. Now, D to Zs, we've had a pretty hard time of it, haven't we? Life's hard, isn't it? Hands up, who of you have been on a bus the last few days? Travelling on a bus. Is it crowded? Did you get a seat? Ah, well, how many of you have not got a seat on a bus recently? You haven't got a seat. You're a D to Z, that's, a, that's an insult, isn't it? That's an insult to us D to Zs not to get a seat on the bus. What about you? Lovely girl there with a hand up. Can we get a mic to her? What did you want to say? No, I didn't. Oh, no, it was the one behind you. Behind you. Oh, never mind. Okay, never mind. Let's just leave it. How many of you, grown up D to Zs, have sat in a traffic jam recently? Oh, we don't like it, do we? We don't like sitting in traffic. How many of you have had a cold, have been to the doctors? It's not nice being ill, is it? No, we don't like being ill. How many of you, wonderful, strong, mighty D to Zs, have had trouble with money recently? Oh, yeah. Not enough pocket money? Would you like a bigger house? Yeah. Would you like more room? Yeah. Would you like better holidays? Yeah. Would you like to have more money? Yeah. Let me tell you, D to Zs, your problem is standing right here in this room. Do you think I'm lying? Those ABCs, they're the ones taking the seats on the bus. They're the ones controlling all the money. Those ABCs, look at them. They all know each other, don't they? It's all a conspiracy. Those ABCs, they have secret meetings we don't know about. They have secret handshakes we don't know about. Let me tell you this, D to Zs, the ABCs, they're gonna take over. Yeah. 
I'll tell you another thing. D to Zs. Let me tell you something. It is scientifically proven that ABCs are genetically inferior. It is scientifically proven that ABCs are genetically inferior to us. That means we are better human beings. Am I right? D to Zs, we're the best. D to Zs, we're the best. Absolutely right. Now, what we're going to do, look around you, look at these ABCs here, look at them. They look quite similar to us, don't they? You wouldn't really pick them out in a crowd. What are we going to do about that? What should we do? How would we pick them out in a crowd? Someone tell me. Hmm? Should we give them something to wear? Yeah? What should we give them to wear? A t-shirt. T-shirt's a good idea. How about a badge? There's a hand up over there. What do you think? A bib. I think we should give those ABCs a badge. Am I right? Yeah, yeah we're going to give those... Be quiet. <laughs> we're going to make them wear a badge. That way we know if one of those ABCs is on the, on the seat on the bus that we should be sitting on. And then we're going to get rid of them. Because imagine how better our lives would be if there were no ABCs. There would be so much more space, wouldn't there? We'd... We'd have bigger houses, wouldn't we? We'd have more money. Yeah. Let me hear you say, ABCs, out you go. ABCs, out you go. ABCs, out you go. Louder. Come on. And stop. Very good. I like this group over here. OK. Let's just give those lovely people standing up a huge round of applause and thanks. Now, I think I know what you think, but what do you think? Tell me, let's have a mic to these girls over here. You were ABCs, weren't you? Yeah. How did it make you feel? What? How did you feel us... Angry! Angry! <laughs> Why are you? Why are you angry? Well... I you're wrong! Am I wrong? It's scientifically proven, remember. And but it hasn't been. It, it has been. But by I doctors. And tell you, let me tell you something, I'm wearing a suit. That doesn't make you any different. It does. People who wear suits know better. I'm right. Okay, let's hear from another, another ABC. Was there somebody over here? Someone over there? Now, please tell me, yeah. Did you feel uncomfortable? I know we're playing a game, but tell me, did you feel a bit uncomfortable? Kind of. Kind of, why? Because it's really embarrassing. Embarrassing? What about humiliating? Mm, yeah, more likely. Is it fair or unfair what I was just doing? Um, 80% unfair. <laughs> so no, what's the 20%? You're not sure? Not sure. But why, why, more why? More likely 80%. What's the, is the 20% because I'm standing here in a suit holding a microphone, so I look like I know what I'm talking about? Yes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen and boys and girls, this is the most important thing that anyone said. What you just said. Someone who stands up with a microphone, wearing a suit. Now, just tell me in one word, it begins with P. Who wears suits? People, yeah. But what job do they have? Politicians. Now, a very, very bad man, who was himself a politician, once said, if you tell a lie often enough, you will start to believe it yourself. How many times did I say that it is genetically proven? It is scientifically proven. How many times did I say that? Once? Twice. If we repeat a lie often enough, we'll believe it ourselves. So this 20% person over here kind of thought I had something going. How dangerous is that? Pretty dangerous, huh? 
I have another question for you. Hands up, who's got a best friend? You haven't got a best friend? Oh, give her a hug. Oh, now you've got one. Have you got a best friend? What's her name? Miriam. Marion. And, uh, and tell me, what's your name? Marion. Your name's Marion too? No. <laughs> what's your best friend's name? Marion. Okay, fine. Just so we've got that. <laughs> now, <laughs> we won't labor the point. Now tell me, if you saw Marion upset and crying, what would you do? Uh, I'd go see her and ask her what's the problem. Ask her what's the problem. Would you give her a hug? Yeah. Yeah, you'd look after her. If, let's see someone else. Who, who else has got a best friend? There's somebody at the back. Go ahead. That's great. Very good microphone passing over there. Daniel. Daniel. So if you saw Daniel being bullied, what would you do? I would tell one of the teachers in my school and then he would stop. Okay, very good. Would you also talk to the bully? No. You'd be scared? No. Would you talk to your friend? Yeah. What would you say to him? It's all right. It's all right. You'd protect him? Yeah. Okay, I've got a question for everybody here. Those of you who stood up as ABCs, put your hands up. Do any of you, except for those of you whose mother's also an ABC, did any of you lie? Did any, are any of you actually not ABCs, but you were standing up out of solidarity and protection for your friends? Did anybody do that? Are you telling me nobody did that? You did. You stood up even though you're not an ABC. Can we have a mic? Why? <laughs> Just tell me why. Because um, it's not nice. It's not nice. So did you stand up because you thought that you would want to be protective or? <laughs> I don't know. Did you feel annoyed with me? No. Did you feel annoyed with those people who were shouting ABCs, out you go, for no reason? So what I'm saying, oh, that's great. Well done for standing up. Give her a hand, round of applause. <laughs> now, all of you would help your best friend if they were being bullied, am I right? But only one of you stood up pretending to be an ABC. If you'd all stood up, what would have happened? What would have happened? Tell me. Yes, at the back with the red. Nice and loud, because there's no mic me. Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, we're all going to die eventually, but the <laughs> that's not quite the point. <laughs> oh, hide! Oh, lied! Sorry, that's why we need microphones. Sorry, I'll take it back. <laughs> now, the point is, if you'd all stood up, pretending to be ABCs, who would I have been? Some nutter at the front talking rubbish, am I right? Yeah. I was talking rubbish, but most of you stayed sitting down listening to me, didn't you? You stamped your feet, didn't you? I was there, I saw it. Listen, the point I'm making is quite important here, because in this small room, in this 10 minutes, we've just created a microcosm of what happens in the world. And the word is prejudice. Do you know what that word means? Who stands up? Who's someone who thinks they know what this word means and they can explain to us? Yes. Say again. When somebody hates you for something you have. For something you have. Yeah. Or something you are. Mm -hmm. Let I'll me ask. That. Let me ask you all a question. Hands up. Who decided what color they would be when they were born? Oh really? <laughs> Did you? <laughs> Hands up who decided what country they would be in when they were born. What, you decided as a little fetus inside your mummy's tummy what country you'd be in? No. These are things that we don't decide. Hands up uh, who decides if you're in a shop and there's something you want to steal. There's a lovely chocolate bar, but you haven't got any money. What are you going to do? Are you going to steal it or are you going to walk past it and not have chocolate? Whose choice is that? That's your own choice, isn't it? To commit a crime. And what happens if you commit a crime? You go to jail. You get locked up. You get your freedom taken away from you. But the question is, is it a crime to be what you are? Have you committed any crime? 
I like you. I like you both. It's very nice. Now be quiet. <laughs> now, my grandma was born at a time when it was a crime to be born a certain way. Can you imagine? Now, that particular example, my grandma is Jewish. And to be born Jewish was a crime so bad that it carried with it the strongest sentence. Now, there were many, many people like her. And she told me lots of stories. One of them was when she was at school, her school friends spat at her. Is that nice or not nice? Has anybody been bullied so much that somebody spat at them? Really? It's not nice, is it? Did it make you cry? A lot. So for some reason, suddenly, my grandma was being spat at by children. But another example of solidarity was when she was on the tram, and it was not allowed for people who were wearing, she had to wear a yellow badge, a yellow star. And if you were wearing one of those, you weren't allowed to sit down on the tram. And do you know what happened? A girl who didn't have a yellow star, who had every right to sit down on the tram, stood up, like this one here. She stood up next to her in solidarity because she didn't agree with this stupid rule that if you were wearing a yellow star, you can't sit down on the tram. Now, this solidarity is an example of the piece you're about to see. Can we have the first slide? The piece you're about to see is called Brundibar. And there are two children, and they're having a really hard time because their mummy is very sick, and they need money to buy her milk to make her better. But they can't sing loud enough to, set, to, to gather the money. And the evil Brundibar, Flagetarge Brundibar, which means the evil, grumpy organ grinder, He's playing so loudly that the children can't be heard. So what happens? The animals and the other children help them. And they sing really loudly and then they make the money. And then the Burundibar tries to steal the money, but they defeat him. And then they sing a fantastic song of victory. Let's have the next slide. These are the children who sang this opera for the first time. And all of these children were taken away from their mummies and daddies. Has anybody been lost in the supermarket? Whoa, lots of people. Whoa. Is it scary? Someone tell me. How did you feel? You thought you'd lost your mummy and daddy. Yes, over there on the left. Whoa, yeah. Scared. You were scared. How long did it last? Um, 10 minutes. And then you found your mummy? And it was all OK. Yeah. Well, all of these children never found their mummy. They were scared for much longer than 10 minutes. And they were put in a place in a very small town called Theresienstadt, Theresien. And in this place, they had no beds to sleep on. They had very little food to eat. And they were very, very scared a lot of the time. I'm going to read you a poem that was written by one of the children who was kept captive in this place at Theresien. His name is Teddy. When a new child comes, everything seems strange to him. What? On the ground I have to lie? Eat black potatoes? No, not I. I've got to stay. It's dirty here. The floor, why look, it's dirt. I'm afraid. And I'm supposed to sleep on the floor? I'll get all dirty. Hear the sounds of shouting and crying and so many flies. Everyone knows flies carry disease. Oh, something bit me, what was that? Here in Terezin, life is hell. And when I can go home again, I cannot tell. Hands up, who knows somebody who's aged 80 or over? Lots of people. Who's, who's your 80-year-old? My uncle. Your 
uncle. What's he like, your uncle? My uncle is... Is he nice? Yes. Is he nice and to you? funny. And he's funny. What, what, does he tell you jokes? No, but oh. he does funny things. He does funny things. What's the funniest thing your uncle did? He does, um, um, um silly, um, he does silly, um, like this. Oh, like this. <laughs> like a oh, that's nice. Like a monkey. Like a monkey. He sounds like a really fun uncle. Now, these children, do you think we could go back two slides to the picture of the children? These children that we saw just now, they would all be 80 now, 70 and 80. They would be grandpas. Hands up who's got a grandpa or a grandma. What are they like? Are they nice? Are they funny? Do they do monkey impressions too? What do they do? What does your grandma do? Shout out, anyone. Well, the point is, out of all of these children, only two of them grew up to be parents, to be funny grandparents. We could see them all now, gray-haired and being funny with their grandchildren and their nephews. There were 16,000 children. 16,000 children held captive. Only 100 lived to be parents and grandparents. We're now going to hear a song, sung by Pietre, Piotr Lempa and Stephen Josephs at the guitar. And they're going to sing a song by Ilse Weber, who herself was a musician and poet in Theresienstadt. And the poem is about walking through Theresienstadt. It's in German. I walk through Theresienstadt. My heart is heavy as iron. And I look out to the forest. And I look out to the hills. And I think of home. And I wonder, will I ever be allowed to return home? After they sing this song, There'll be a small break, and everyone should stay seated. There'll be some action on stage with some very, very strong men. And then, Mahogany Opera and Pembroke Academy of Music will perform for you this fantastic work in memory of these wonderful children. Whilst they sing, we're going to see some lovely drawings drawn by children in Theresienstadt. And they're drawing everyday life. You'll see pictures of the bunk beds, You'll see pictures of people queuing up for food and many, many other things. You'll see a picture of the very crowded streets. So, enjoy. This is Ich wandere durch Theresienstadt by Ilse Weber. Das ist 